This track was best selling track for 2023 for Techno, and on top of that, it had 12.5 million streams on Spotify. So it's loved by the DJs and casual listeners alike. The question is, why? Why did it work? Let's break it down. I'm going to divide this track into three parts. The first part will be the groove, the second part will be the break, and the third part will be the drop. So that we can take a look at each section and really understand what makes it so good. Let's start with the groove. What a long kick, oh my god. People who say don't use long kicks, take a look at this thing. That's a big one. Sampling, here we go. We have very loud body and click, and then a long tail, which gives this very aggressive sound to the kick. There's a quite a bit of resonance on the sound, so buddy. I can probably get away with like just band pass and use a sub under because there's a sub under this sound. It's also a bit stereo. Let's add a bit buddy. So these notes are much closer, I think, to each other. I'm gonna give it a little bit uh, not as well. So the upper notes has a bit more open cutoff. Really close the notes are one up one down so that we have that movement in sound. If you listen to here, we have a bottom sub bass layer on it, not the same as the top layer. You can see it here, dum 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 dum. The exact point could be a bit different, we can adjust it later on. I'm gonna make it mono and be with this a bit warmer. Side chain the kick. Look ahead 10 so that we can start right before the kick. Put a bit off so that we are getting all the click area of the kick. This will be snappier because of that. There's a bit stereo in the sub bass area, I think here. It's like boop boop. We can do the same, no problem. Add another slider. We do this. Kind of similar, isn't it? If you are looking for more big techno sounds like this, check out my preset packs. I have tons of sounds over there. All right, we have the hats. Let me see if I can resample them. Let's get the mid layer here. I'm gonna make it from my own samples, this one. It still gives me enough separation so that I can then come up with my own sample. Onyx. I think I can tune up this one. Pretty the same. Onyx never disappoints. I think we have a layer like... Let's try this. Emphasis here, I think. Overdrive here. Exactly. Great! What type of reverb do we have here? I'm hearing a room on the background, right room. I think the reverb is distorted as well. Regular reverb sound there. Take off the chorus, take off the spin. Let's drive this sound as well. It's a bit more snappier. So what I'm going to do, this is a simple technique, good to learn. Grab a compressor, a big ratio, and get the attack high. The attack goes in, but we are compressing the tail. Like this. And then we need that shaker on the background. This may work. So I'm gonna side chain the key so that we can hear that pumping that the original track has. I think there is kind of a chorus like effects on it. Yeah. Thinner here as well. Now I'm gonna try this. Now, to make your shakers cooler, divide them up like different versions. Then you can play with the positioning of like this. You can make very authentic shakers. I'm gonna put a video over here, so take a look. Delay. Let me put a course. Now we are much closer, I think, total. If you listen, there is a couple of things that we are missing. There's noise layer in the background, like all the time. Let's try to make it with the vintage reverb. Getting exactly the same noise it really depends on what he used on the reverb. I think we can get close enough. Send stuff there. Get a 
free clip so that I can avoid that splashy sound. Touching the kick. Overdrive. Now we can adjust the amount here always. I think this is good enough. It probably did something similar. While the vintage reverb is everybody's favorite. I think it's just a snare. I'm probably ripped the snare here. Just trying to find the fundamental of the snares. Right here, I think this is the fundamental of the snare. I want to hear the snare in isolation so that I can hear a bit better. Hmm. Pretty much the small clap layer on top. I think I'm gonna do free clip so it's not super dynamic and eating up my head drop. Pro R. Stabs in the background. Oh, it's like ding, 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 ding. Serum. Kind of stabby, but it's pretty saturated. This is our groove. I would say pretty straightforward low and and pretty straightforward high end as well. Pretty cool. If you have watched the video until now, you are probably enjoying it. Please consider subscribing. It is free, but it really helps a ton. The second part of this track is actually break. And it's one of my favorite parts because I like this type of extended melodic melancholic breaks. And this track has really good one. The most distinct instrument is the plucks. The notes goes like this. The sound is made of two elements. We have this organic plug sound. I made this one by using the pigment sample music box. It gives this nice shimmering high top under it the same sample but one octave down. But of course the sound itself is a bit weak so we have to layer this one with a synthesizer. A classic analog synth sound. Again plug envelopes, a bit distortion and EQ, a bit pan and delay. Coming straight from Pigment's top 60 preset pack from Elduc Techno. And then you layer them together, we have this. To make ambient a little bit richer, we layer this one with a Lee's bass sound. Just a single oscillator, soft to it, with unison on top, and a bit reverb. And then we bring kick and clap to enhance this aggressiveness. High end snare rolls, noise layer, and pitch riser, and all together, now we have this. And this concludes the break. Finally, the drop. Probably this part is the part you really want to hear because there's a lead sound that kind of makes the track. And then goes right in the drop, and that lead sound really carries the track. And how does it work? First, we have this kind of warm sound. It's light sustain, plucky, and envelope 2 is super plucky. Pink is making that sound. And we put in the full unison. And then we put the second layer. Put the noise on top. Very aggressive. And then the hyper dimension. I'm gonna take the effects of should bake to sound in like this. Right? EQ. And then the wave shaper is making the sound much more noise like. Without. Another EQ to just fine tune. I have another layer, but this layer is a bit more metallic. The character is really coming from picking an oscillator like this, and um, you can change the character of the sound quite a bit here. But the way I like to do is like this, and then an EQ. The first one is like the wave shaper, but the main character comes really from the ozone's trash too. When you open this comes like super super saturated sound here. The layer has a slight automation on top, playing with the filter frequency here. And this is like a pre-break part and then you just go drop with these sounds. We have a bit more interplay between them. We have this more distorted sound. Similar thing over here as well. And together they turn into this. 
listen to an original track, in my ears, it could be very well just single layer. The sound really depends a lot on the distortion, so it's really hard to just get exactly the same sound in the single layer. And all together, now we have this. learn more about techno production, I have 15 hours course with all the details inside it in the academy on mercurial tones. On top of that, I even put the long version of this video there in case you want to see every single detail. But if you want more free videos, I have more techno production videos over here. Take a look.